Tyler O'Neill, and that took a turn a bit today. So it was really kind of hinted at yesterday, and we wrote about it then too, this notion that he's trying to win the center field job. Yeah, I think it's really cool. I, I, that was a really good story. You know, I hate to do the what are the odds question thing, but um, you think he's got a, a reasonable chance to win that center field job, uh, or or is it going to be kind of what we expected, at least uh, tentatively going in, that it would be, you know, Neil on left, maybe Carlson center, maybe Newt Bar and right, or the fact is it just interchangeable, period? Yeah, it's pretty interchangeable, period, but I will say that there are really – Two big elements here. One, how does Tyler do in-game action handling that position? Do they feel comfortable putting him out there? Is he the fielder um, that they graded him out as in the minors, which was a center fielder, a playable center fielder? Is he that guy? And then two, does somebody out hit Dylan Carlson? If another one of the outfielders out hits Dylan Carlson, then you could see that as a real possibility because they'll put Tyler in center, Newt in right, and then this this outfielder who out hits Dylan in left. That could be anybody. That could be Burleson. That could be Yepes. That could be Jordan Walker. But that is also part of this equation, and it frees the Cardinals up for that possibility. So it's those two steps. Can Tyler handle the position? If that's a yes, almost like a float chart. If that's a yes, does somebody out hit Dylan Carlson? If that's a yes, then Tyler O'Neill's your center fielder. You know, uh, Will Leach and I were talking about this on our own podcast earlier this week, Seeing Red, and we were talking about the outfield, and I, I suggested that people need to get it, kind of get away from the standard thought process yep. on this, that, that it's like, well, Absolutely. this guy's – yeah, this guy's the left fielder, this guy's the center fielder, this guy's the right fielder. Here are your three starters. Okay, let's go. You know, it's it's not going to work like that, and I, you know, to this year with the Cardinals. And people that followed Ali Marmol last year should know that. I mean, because it's a situation where Ali Marmol is going to play matchups. He's going to play – he's going to get down to the granular level trying to figure out who should play every day. And it's not going to be a set lineup, a set outfield. I mean, there's going to be – People moving all around the place, and we're and when Jordan Walker comes up, whenever that is, then it's going to change again. So I mean, I think we're just going to see this. Other than you're not going to see Jordan Walker in center field unless it's like absolutely necessary in an emergency. You're you're just going to right. see this interchangeable moving parts outfield all year. So we need to just break away from viewing it as some standard old schooly type thing because it, it isn't. Right. Yeah, and that's particularly and purposefully true in the outfield. Uh, I mean, it's not going to be – I mean, first and third base are going to be everyday players. You're going to see sure, a lot of guys sure. there. You know, they want a guy who is going to catch two-thirds of the game and catcher. That's what they want. But the outfield is way more malleable, um, and the DH is a part of it. You're, you're exactly right. This, you know, even talking with Marmol today at one point in time, um, you know, we're – we're going through and a reporter's kind of bringing up a scenario and my mole kind of looks at us and I'm like, look, man, are you just going to have four outfielders? Isn't that just how we look at this? And that's how it's going to be, you know, the, and it's not like novel and it's not new and it's not going to cost anybody at bats. That's the other part of this, right? Is like, there are actually enough at bats out there in the outfield for four guys to get enough to qualify for the batting title. So that's a reality. So, yeah, they're going to utilize that. You're exactly right. You put it very well. They get past the notion of these three lanes, always the same three guys, because, A, it's never really been that way, and, B, that's definitely not how this roster is built. No, no. And, um, you know, just like I, I actually thought, one thing, one thing I did before, before the start of last season, maybe it was a year ago at this time, you know, it's kind of, kind of saying, well, geez, uh, you know, you, you have pool holes to DH, and that's great, but you know, if he's off to a bad start or something, who, who's going to DH, and just worrying about this endlessly, and I, I completely underestimated how Ali Marmol, uh, how well he was going to handle the DH spot. I mean, to me, one of the interesting stats of last season is that Albert Pujols only made 36% of the uh, plate appearances at DH last of the entire DH spot. 
like the Cardinals yeah. DH plate appearances, he only had 36% of them because Marmol was just moving people into that, including Arenado and, and Goldschmidt, probably more than we anticipated, at least me. Um, and he he just was shuttling people in and out of that spot all season and really maximized the production. I mean, he really did a fantastic job with that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's going to be more of the same this year, except for there just won't be a guy who – goes on a surge to 700 career home runs though if somebody does it would be quite a record yeah no no doubt about it hey derek um <laughs> <laughs> yeah i don't who is anybody close to 700 Any, who's close no, but uh, nolan probably not. home run will be 300 that's pretty good that's pretty yeah, good 300 is not too not too bad speaking of him and speaking of goldie Mm-hmm. What do you think? What do you think's fair to expect from them in terms of their offensive production? I, they were incredible last year, and you know, but you know, if, if you use OPS plus, which adjusts for ballpark effects and league effects that year, uh, both of those guys had their best individual seasons when it's neutralized. That stats neutralized. But is it yeah. fair to ask them to come even can come close to doing that again? Is that asking too much? Two years in a row, they would say no. Um, both of them would say no. I think, you know, Paul Goldschmidt had mentioned OPS plus. His OPS plus there for a while was going to be the highest of any Cardinal not named Rogers, Stan, or Albert. And it still is way up there. I think it still is. It might even still be the highest of any Cardinal not named Stan, Albert, or Rogers, um, which is a remarkable company to keep, obviously. Um, so he had a rare season. Um, Arenado had a career season, but it also seems to be like a harbinger season. Um, he, you know, having found success at Bush Stadium, having, you know, embraced and, and advanced in so many ways, whether it's the handcrafted, specially made bat or all the studies and works he's done on what he can do to just further just um, amplify his swing and his success with it. And then also his natural gift for barrel to, to ball. Um, I don't know. He just seems primed for something beyond last year. I don't know any other way to put it. Uh, you know, obviously there's no guarantee of that. Um, you don't know if it's going to come in streaks. Um, but he is well positioned and confident, and the opt out is in the background. He's got a, you know, he's got a home for a long time. He's got a goal. He obviously relishes playing with Paul Goldschmidt. There's, there's, he'll have Wilson Contreras batting somewhere else, perhaps right behind him. Um, so all of that, it just seems like he's on the brink of. If, if not a career year, then a duplication and one that wins an MVP. That just seems to be what where he is in his at this moment. Yeah, I, I, I uh, to say, but I don't know any other way to put it. No, that's that's really good. I, I I totally agree. All right, this is one of those questions that I get asked a lot, so I'm going to throw it at you, and I'm sure you've been asked about it in chats, but. You know, last year, once pool holes, especially, well, definitely after he started hitting, and, you know, in July, early July, roughly. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the Cardinals' big three, so to speak, was easily identifiable. I don't even have to say who the three were because we know. Well, but with pool right. holes gone, who's who's going to be the third in that big three alignment? Who's going to be their third guy that you say, look at and say, okay, the Cardinals' big three in the lineup is this? Who's the safe bet or who's the sleeper? Well, you give me both, yeah, because I'm, I'm, I, I, I know you think about these things, and I like that. The safe bet is Wilson Contreras, right? Like, I mean, he's going to bring a level of power to the catcher position that the Cardinals haven't had before. And, you know, he's going to if, – if he bats behind Goldschmidt and Nolan Arenado, he's going to feast on RBIs. If he bats ahead of him, he's going to feast on runs, whatever, however it works out. Um, the sleeper is Tyler O'Neill. We go back to our center field conversation i mean if he's right when he's been on the field and this includes last season um when he wasn't when he was out of the arbitration fog he's been really good the last few years and while all the metrics and things and performance last year suggested 
that new bar is on the rise and he is the kind of damage that you're talking about that kind of power force that kind of like who's the trio that that makes people stand up and pay attention it's it's o'neill is the sleeper pick there is it's like it was a few years ago when it was goldsmith adding second o'neill third and aren't out of cleanup and that's when the offense took off and if they can get that again that is probably the best offense they could have that's probably the best recipe for offense yeah i, I you and, and i are on the same bar and Contreras would be compliments yeah, you and I are on the same page on that. And I uh, I always wonder, since you mentioned Newt Bar, if you were filling out the lineup, um, at least mm-hmm. f- for for a good percentage of the games, because, again, we're, it's not going to be a standard lineup. But would would you would you go Newt Bar at leadoff? Would you go Donovan at leadoff? Or would you go Edmund at leadoff? I, I think. Ed, speaking of myself, I don't, I don't know. I don't think Edmund would be my top choice, but uh, open-minded on the other two guys. What do you, what do you think? Yeah, you know, I think it's really interesting that one of the one of the ways this lineup goes is does it go left, left, and right, 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 right? And how do you look at that? Do you care? Um, does the three batter minimum play into this, or do you just ignore it and just go with your best? I mean, you know, I really like the argument of stacking on base percentage and then stacking OPS, right? And right. one way to do that is you put Donovan and then Newt Bar to stack the on base percentage. And then you go Goldschmidt, Arenado, Contreras, O'Neill to stack the OPS. And that does put you in a spot where it's left, left, right, 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 then you know, then what, maybe even right, then switch, switch, you know, with Carlson and um, and Edmund there toward the end. So I, I just, I don't know how to balance the lineup at the moment, right? Like, you just don't know. Um, but one way to do it would to have Newt Bar lead off and Contreras bat second and Donovan where, like, have Donovan move back in the middle. Right. As sort of like a an OBP, I don't know the the OBP and a PBJ, right between two OPSs. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, it's interesting because I still I still kind of wrap my head around the fact that the Cardinals, um, you know, in those two playoff games had Donovan batting fifth, and I don't even I, I'm not even being critical of that. I think it just showed you what maybe the difference between last year's team and this year's team, because uh, yeah. if O'Neill is healthy, uh, Donovan's not batting fifth. Uh, if, uh, if Contreras is a Cardinal, let's say for that series, um, Donovan's not batting fifth. It just, you know, boy, it just right. showed you that when Marmol had uh, fewer, uh, fewer viable options, you know, it was uh, the lineup wasn't as easy to fill out. I mean, there, and it's, right. and, and it's no disrespect intended to Donovan. Not at all, but it's just you, you probably just want a little more power there, and um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, that's all. That's all. I I think so. I mean, I just I think one way to look at the Cardinals lineup is who makes the fewest outs, have them bat a lot, and because the guys who also hit for damage are not making a whole lot of outs, and that's actually kind of why some of the projections really love the Cardinals lineup is because a the projections don't buy into lineup dynamics. They just look at who's going to do the damage. They don't put them in order, right? They say, like, batting order doesn't matter, right? And the other part is that just, there's just a lot of guys who are projected not to make outs. Yeah, and Contreras, uh, especially for a catcher, has always yeah. been a really good on-base percentage guy. So, yep. Well, Derek, Derek, yeah. I know you're very busy. I don't want to keep you longer. I, I enjoyed the conversation, as always. Um Thanks for all the hard work that you guys are doing down there. It's a uh, ma- amazing uh, amount of content, but it's quality content at that. So, thank you so much. All right. Yeah, thank you for saying that, Bernie. I appreciate you got it. it. Now you, you got we have it. to go do it tomorrow, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Hey, you know, uh, I've told you this a hundred times, maybe a thousand times, and you don't listen to me. So, what's the point? But pace yourself, man. Pace yourself. <laughs> yeah, so, I'm trying. Either, 
Either that or load yeah. up. Uh, you can buy those double caffeine uh, coffees at Starbucks, like the little con- the little things for the Keurig. You got to yeah, go double. Yeah, ca- you got to go sure. double caffeine, I guess. That is something that I do need to do. I need to make a uh, coffee <laughs> tonight. So I have some ready. No, no, I'm just trying to multitask. You know, this is a chance to talk with you, but also get my steps in. So I just went for a nice walk. So that's what I. You know, it's good. Go. I'm glad I could provide a service. So yeah, no, thank. Thanks I'm for like, being my. I'm. Half, I, half. <laughs> I'm your treadmill, man. <laughs> thank you. Take care. That's our guy, De- De- uh, Derek Gould, down in, in Jupiter. Cardinals lineup's fascinating to me. It's going to be much deeper if uh, Foneal's healthy and doing what he he'll do, doing what he does when he is healthy. Uh, their their lineup's going to be deeper. The Contreras thing makes it a lot deeper, and uh, I'm glad that Derek and I see eye to eye. It'd be okay if we didn't, but uh, people just need to stop being so hung up on this. Well, who are the three outfielders that are going to start? You know who's. You know, it's like, well, who, who the three starters are, who are they? You know, it's like um, you're going to have plenty. Of, you're going to have uh, you're going to have four, maybe even five outfielders start quite a few games. It's just a matter of matchups, who is healthy, uh, how the the Cardinals manager views bullpen scenarios from the other side. Like when when, you know, anticipating, OK, he's going to bring in his lefty here. Uh, and he left. He's got to face three guys, you know that kind of thing. So maybe that's when Ali Marmol swaps, you know, swaps uh, swaps some people around in his lineup. But people just need to get over this. It's not going to be where this is your everyday left fielder. This is this is your everyday center fielder. This is your everyday right. It, it's just not going to work like that. You know, like Derek, Derek extended the point I made, and I appreciate that. It's not only just the three outfield spots each day it's also the dh and ali ali marmal gave you the roadmap to how he he likes to handle the dh which is to distribute the at bats to quite a long list of people it's not the exclusive property of one or two guys so the outfielders are going to get plenty of at bats but uh you know the top four outfielders uh and even a fifth outfielder type will get plenty of at bats because some of those bats will be taken in the DH spot. So you're going to have outfielders swinging the bat a lot. It's not just going to be three guys and then the fourth guy. It's just completely different than the standard thinking. And I think that, I think the, the faster that, that, you know, generally speaking, you know, people adapt to that thought and adapt to the way it is and the way it's going to be, then it, people aren't going to be, you know, stressing out about, well, who's going to be in left? I mean, who, 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 who. Who's going to be in center? Who's going to be in right? O'Neill can play all three positions. Newpar can play all three positions. Carlson can play all three positions. Walker can play left and right. I guess in a pinch he could play center. He did last year in the minors. Um, Brendan Donovan can play left or right. Um, he, he he did not play any in center last year, but I wouldn't rule out him getting, you know, if they need him, uh, getting, uh, you, you know, a, a, a shot there. Uh, coming up and so if when you have that many interchangeable outfielders that you can move around out there um, and all of them are you know other than Yepes all of them are pretty pretty solid or better defensively then I there's just not there's not that much to worry about the only thing to worry about is whether they perform the way that it's anticipated you know Uh, but I would just get away from the lineup model you know the 1965 uh, lineup model, you know, where you play the same lineup every day unless some guy's hurt or needs a rest. You know, it's a, it just doesn't work that way anymore, and it shouldn't because it's stupid. You know, you, you need to maximize your chances of scoring runs, and you do that by – if you have a chance to, to uh, take advantage of a matchup, you uh, – or matchups, plural, you, uh, you do that and you adjust or you, you put together your lineup for that day accordingly. You know, it's just what – why – well, you know, no, 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 this guy is my, you know, no, this guy has got a bat here and he, he's got to play this position. Why? If he's not, if he's, if it's not a good matchup against pitcher or a guy's bad against right-handed pitchers, good against left-handed pitchers, uh, one guy doesn't hit that pitcher well in his whole career, well, why would you play him when you have other options? 
It just doesn't make any sense. So I think Marmol is really, really, really good about this. And last year, um, he gave the Card- Cardinals a, plut- a platoon split advantage at a higher level than it's been in quite a while. Where, in other words, uh, if they they got a righty on the mound, they're starting him. You know, he he always he made sure to have plenty of left handers and left hand hitters in the lineup, or vice versa. So they, the Cardinals would have the platoon split advantage uh, in in a lot more games than they were under Mike Schilt and Mike Matheny. So that's to his credit. It's one of the reasons why they were tied for fourth in the majors in runs per game. So anyway, 